call our meeting to order. Will everyone please stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Bobby, will you please do the roll call? Sure. Kellogg? Here. Shoemaker? Here. Vaughn? Here. Pullen? Here. Hofstetter? Here. And Kahn? Here. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Um, we have a couple of ways that you can talk to council tonight. If you have any questions at any time, any comments, um, please come up to the microphone, and that way the people that are watching from home can hear you. Um, if you're shy and you don't want to talk by the microphone, there are little note cards over there. You can write your question or your comment and just bring it and set it up here and I'll ask. So we'll get going here. Um, do we have a motion to suspend the reading of the minutes? So moved. I'll second that, Con. Pullen? Aye. Con? Aye. <clears throat> Kellogg. Yes. Shoemaker. Aye. Vaughn. Aye. And Hofstetter. Aye. Do we have any additions or corrections to the minutes? No. Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve? I so move. Shoemaker. Second. Shoemaker. Aye. Vaughn. Aye. Kellogg. Yes. Poland. Aye. Hofstetter. Aye. And Kahn. Aye. Bill Resolution 2024-01, are there any questions? Hearing none, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. I'll second that, Kahn. Hofstetter? Aye. Kahn? Aye. Kellogg? Yes. Shoemaker? Aye. Vaughn? Aye. Pullen? Aye. Chief Shaner, do you have anything to report? Um, just to give you guys all a little update on the 2017 cruiser, which was involved in the crash. Um, I called Holmesville this morning, checked with them. They're still waiting on parts for the suspension. Uh, they couldn't give me a date. Parts were supposed to be in today or tomorrow. Hopefully within the week they would have it done, but they still wouldn't give me a date. So still waiting on that to get done. I mean, I don't have anything. Thank you. Um, Nate? Uh, <coughs> There was no submittals for the des design review or planning and zoning meetings for January. Uh, so far, nothing for February. But we do have a public hearing before the next council meeting at 645 for the Havenwood development off of Hickory Street. The Worcester Road speed study, <coughs> Carpenter Marty actually just sent me this this evening. I got a, their fee proposal and it's almost identical to the, the last one that was done. I didn't get a chance to print that out yet, but I can tell you what it is here. Their not to exceed number is $7,200. And I did talk to the county engineer's office. They, they okayed us using our share of the permissive tax funds for that. Um, I did get another name of a company um, mastermind out of Dublin through Corey Baker with the Holmes County Engineer's Office. So I'm going to check with them as well. Depending, he, he said they aren't the only, he didn't obviously know their pricing, but they can be, they can take some time to do their work. So I want to talk to them tomorrow and see if what their time frame to complete this and what their price would be before I proceed. But either way, we'll get, we'll get one of them on the hook here and get that going. Uh, Deer Run Park, if you've been up there, you've seen Totally Outdoors is set up. They're working on the base for the artificial turf installation. They also added two steps, or three steps total, um, to make it more traditional stair stairway so there's not an awkward landing between the upper and lower tiers to minimize any trip hazards there. So hopefully if we get a decent weather window, they can get the turf in and get that done. That's right on cue. <laughs> 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 yeah. um, 2024 resurfacing, as you know, we didn't be, we weren't able to get the plans back in time to get out to bid in 2023. Uh, 
So <coughs> we'd like to proceed with that work that's already done. We have the bid packets ready to go. It would be the East Jones Worcester Road intersection reconfiguration that we talked about, removing that center island, striping Glen Drive, and then resurfacing all of Oak Hill Cemetery. The estimate also included replacing the curb on both sides of South Monroe, but the estimate is over 500,000. We don't have that. We have 275 appropriated. If we remove the curb, we'll be under the 275. Assuming bids come in good, I feel comfortable doing that. Is that agreeable with everybody for this year's project? If so, that's how we'll proceed. Get that out to bid and hopefully have a bid opening late February. Award something and get on the schedule early. Hey, Nate, uh, at different times we've talked about extending street lights out East Jones. Yes. At the time that that <coughs> project is done, would that be a good time to, to have them do that? I or? talked with AEP about that several months ago as well. Um, I'd ask them to look at our all of our corporate corporate limits corporation limits to make sure lights are extended all the way everywhere. Um, they hadn't, at last I talked to them, they hadn't given me any numbers on any of that. Typically they don't charge us for that, it's just added on to our monthly, we play, pay a fat, flat fee based on the number of lights. So there'd be additional expense there, but not installation. Um, I'll follow up with the engineer that I talked to on that to see where where we're at with the to all the corporation limits would that include uh like fort washington yeah okay because yeah. i mean i know that's kind of in and out but it is but i think we could okay i think it makes sense to light it to glen drive at least that is quite dark it is at night. okay thank you <clears throat> and then i guess i don't know how you want me to do if you want me to wait to the legislation or talk about it now we can talk about it now um Karen pointed out a, a typo in the ordinance that's scheduled for the third reading, the design review ordinance. The old, or the current version reads the village under 1349-01, it reads the, the village council at its first meeting of every other year shall appoint one of its members for membership on the board, meaning the design review board. Those are mayoral appointments so we want to change that to say the mayor shall appoint one village council member and it should be at its annual meeting it should be an annual appointment not every other year i'm not sure how the, i think every other is just a strictly a typo so if everybody's okay with that we'll get that that version in the final what's signed and what's codified if that makes sense that was the only change we had clarification. I believe that's it. Thank you. Bobby. All right. <clears throat> so the uh, December monthly financials went out by email and everybody signed that, signed that acknowledgement as did everyone sign the year end financials. <coughs> Any questions about those? No. And then Karen had. Karen, yep. I just wanted so that it's documented in the minutes um, that I gave the oath of office to Councilman Bond and Councilwoman Kellogg on the 28th of December and and myself, Tom gave me mine. Um, <laughs> and then I administered the oath to Mayor Hoffey on the 30th of December. So I just wanted that noted so it's documented in the minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Bob, do you have anything? I don't have anything, thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, so we have the 2024 committee appointments um, that you all received. I kind of tried to do where people, things that people were interested in. Um, I also have, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, John McFarland is here tonight. He's in the back. He is going to be joining our design review board and our planning and zoning board. And Janie Tish is here as well, and she's gonna be joining our Tree City Board. So I need a motion to approve um, John McFarland and Mike Uhl for the Design Review Board, and John McFarland and Brett Gallion for Planning and Zoning, and Beth Martin Logan, who was already on Tree City, and Janie for both the Tree City. I'll make a motion to approve all. 
Second. <clears throat> yeah, sorry. Shoemaker. Aye. Vaughn. Aye. Kellogg. Yes. Poland. Aye. Hofstetter. Aye. And Kahn. Aye. The other thing is one of the things we're going to try this year so that we don't overextend Bobby and Karen is if there's a committee meeting and it's not with all of council, whoever's the council members that are there needs to bring the minutes or notes back to council and we'll discuss it whenever we discuss committees and that way Bobby can take notes then and we don't have to have her and Karen out all hours all the time. Um, the next thing we need to talk about is our 2024 meeting dates. Have any discussion on that? <clears throat> I think the time is a good time. Seven o'clock. Um, we took was it June, July, August? June, July, August. Off, or one, just one, one left, not off. Take us off. <laughs> right. I took a break from two meetings and went to one meeting. Yeah. So, so I'm okay with that. that seems For the work. second and fourth Mondays at 7 o'clock? Yeah. Does that suit everyone? Except those months. Except for mm -hmm. June, Jul June, July, and August, we'll meet yeah. just the first, or we'll meet the second Monday only on those weeks. The other date that is going to affect our council meetings is Excuse Memorial me. Day. Excuse me, here. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the problem with doing the second meeting of the month, I think we did this last year, was our budget is due in July by the 15th. So no, did I, did I say that wrong? On June, July, and August, we would just do the second Monday. So we would just do our first okay, meeting. Not the second meeting. Yes, not okay. we would just do our first <laughs> meeting of the month and not the second one. Is that okay? Okay. Is that so we have the second and fourth Mondays at seven, our regular council meetings. The months of June, July, and August, we will only do our first meeting of the month. And Memorial Day is May twenty seventh, and that is a meeting night. So we're going to have to meet on Tuesday or Wednesday of that week, whatever you, whatever council decides. I just thought if we had everything set at this meeting, we would all know. Tuesday's fine for me. Tuesday? Mm -hmm. Does Tuesday work for everyone? Devon? Yep. Is Tuesday okay? Okay, well then we'll do Tuesday, May 28th <coughs> instead of Memorial Day. Do we need a motion to set those dates? Probably shouldn't. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the dates that uh, Mayor Hoppy just uh, read into the minutes. Second. Khan? Aye. Olin? Aye. Kellogg? Yes. Shoemaker? Aye. Vaughn? Aye. And Hofstetter? Aye. Okay, the next thing we need to do is elect a council president for 2024. I'll make a motion to keep in our rotation that Councilman Khan would be our president this coming year. I'll second. Second that. Any discussion? No? Okay. Shoemaker? Aye. And was it? Okay, sorry. Uh, Vaughn? Aye. Kellogg? Yes. Poland? Aye. Hofstetter? Aye. And Khan? I'm abstaining. Oh, yeah, you wouldn't <laughs> vote on that, would you? Sorry. Congratulations, Council <laughs> President. <laughs> okay, moving along. We will have the third reading of ordinance number 2023-108 by title only, an ordinance revising the previous ordinance, establishing design districts and a design review board and adopting and clarifying additional guidelines. Are there any questions on the new design review guidelines, including the change? No, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second, Khan. Hofstetter? Aye. Khan? Aye. Kellogg? Yes. Shoemaker? Aye. Vaughn? Aye. From Poland? Aye. Okay, we have our second reading for ordinance number 2024-100, an ordinance amending the zoning map, zone territory of the village of Millersburg. Are there any questions? No? Okay. Um, I talked about the committee reports. 
Um, is there are there any is there any old business? No. New business. I want to bring up that our last meeting you presented uh, Mayor Hubner with a plaque, mm -hmm. and understand that Mayor Hoffy paid for all that. I did. So I'm asking the other council members that we can throw money in. Oh, yeah. So it's divided. You don't have to do that. I know, but I think it's the right thing to do. Yeah, I don't know how do the other council members I'd feel. I'd be happy to contribute, yeah. Well, thank you. You don't Just have to do that. Send a bill. <laughs> <laughs> All my time and effort. Know. I don't know. <laughs> um, I have two items for new business. Um, one, my office hours are Tuesdays and Thursdays from four to six. Um, if anyone is interested in stopping by and chit chatting or giving me a call, whatever. Um, okay, I have more than two, sorry. Um, we have this year, the bicentennial celebration of Holmes County. Would you like to tell us a little bit about that, Melissa? Yeah. So, my name is Melissa Patrick, for the record, and I'm the chairperson for the Bicentennial Committee this year. And so we have set dates. We're starting in July 24 and ending in July 25 because there's a little controversy on is it 24 or is it 25? So we'll, we said we're going to span both and we'll celebrate in both. And we want to celebrate with each of the towns and the areas in Holmes County to really make sure that we include everybody. Um, in our search for information, we have found that in the centennial celebration, not only did Holmes County celebrate, but the village of Millersburg celebrated. As they were founded in 25, but not incorporated until 35, which is where you have your 35 on the thing. So you as the village of Millersburg, one may want to look at participating in like our second half or even the first half if you want to of the bicentennial celebration. We're having a meeting on the 24th at 6 p.m. at the chamber. Um, so uh, we're trying to get as many people from the small towns, the townships, and groups, business groups to try to participate because we want to have like a a close a beginning and an end and then celebrations in between 200 years is pretty important and we've got a lot of great ideas that we're working on and so we are we're moving forward so anybody who wants to come is welcome to us I've sent out a few emails here and there on what I can um, that I have information for but they can share also um, yeah if y'all have any questions we're we're working diligently we've We've got a lot of neat ideas to move forward. So it's it's up to you guys if you want to celebrate your bicentennial with the county or if you want to stick to the when you were incorporated, <coughs> but you did celebrate your centennial with the county. So we have a program. Mark was going to get it to me, and he didn't, <coughs> that I was going to bring tonight. But we, if you would like to see it, contact Mark at the Historical Society. We actually have one of the programs from the centennial celebration. So you can take a look and see what was, there was a pageant and all kinds of stuff. So of course we gotta go bigger for 200. A parade, so. right? Parade? I, um, I would really, 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 really <laughs> like a parade. So <laughs> we'll see what we can do. So what, what year do you use? Because as I understand, the Holmes County was formed in 1824 and then it was organized in 1825. That's why we're splitting. Okay, so <laughs> I know on some Because there's some diehards who are 24 because that's when it was this, and there are some diehards who are 25. And so we're just gonna do both. I'm 24. <laughs> Dave's, Dave's is 24. Because <laughs> I know on like the, the seal of uh -huh. Holmes County, it says 1825, if I'm not mistaken. I've seen 1824 and 1825. And that's where you get in. It's a whole, there's a lot. Like, we're obviously seeing with Millersburg, 25 and 35. Like that's a whole 10 year span between founded. But technically, if yeah. you're founded, you're here. You exist. Yeah. And Mark said if you really wanted to go to the book, Old Town was formed in 1815, 
and so you missed it. (laughs) 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 That's that's why we're doing 24 and 25. That way we make everybody happy with the date-wise, and we have a whole year to celebrate and include everybody. So So let me throw something at you, because I've been thinking about this. Sometimes I can catch. I'll throw it at you. So there's an old picture of all the elected officials, and they're standing on the courthouse steps. They're all men back then. Okay, they're wearing their suits, their canes, or you know, everything. It's pretty neat. And I don't know what year it was, but Sheriff Bell was in the picture. So it would have been like 1909 or before that. I think it would be cool to get all the elected officials together, have them stand. So what I'm hearing is Bradcon volunteers to get all the elected officials I, together. <laughs> you know, I, I, I would be happy to to if you would be or happy to volunteer like that, that out. We would be happy to let you. Yeah, but it was an idea. I thought 200 years later, you know, and Show to get the current elected officials and have them stand on and have a before and. Yes, if you would like to organize that, you're in. So that would be something that if I organize that, um, is there somebody I should contact? Me. About, okay. Um, Because one of the things we want to do that's as part, what we're going to talk with everybody who comes to the meeting is we'd like to do time capsules in each, like Millersburg, Glenmont, you know, each little area have their own little time capsule to open in 50 years. So that could be something that could be put in the county time capsule to be opened in 50 years. That's cool. Mm-hmm. I think the men should wear top hats. Yeah. <laughs> I, I also would uh, ask for top hats in <laughs> Any other questions? Any other questions? If you have any questions or anything, you can reach out to me. I'm, at the radio I'm just glad that somebody has recognized or thought about you know, the 200 year anniversary. Oh yeah, we've been planning this for a while. It's Good. been on our radar, so. I have a question. You say you want to do both 1824, or I'm sorry, 2024 and 2025. So does this mean it's on New Year's Eve or like? No, July to July. <laughs> okay. No, July 24. Like okay. July 24 to July 25, we'll celebrate in the whole year okay. with each of the different towns. We want to utilize festivals that already exist. And you know, instead of creating a whole bunch of other stuff that doesn't exist, we'll float in with what is already there and add in our 200. Because Killbuck's also celebrating 150, so it's a lot of big years this year. So we're trying to incorporate everything. And our, our town Millersburg series kind of kicks things off a little early on March 28th. 28th, yes. March 28th at the American Hall. It'll be one of the first things to happen. At 7. In the event center at American Hall. So that will kind of get you your history on Millersburg. So that affects y'all also. And and everyone will get to see what the American Hall looks like upstairs. I'm excited about that. Also, yes. So, yeah. Any other questions? Other than 1834 sticks in the back of my mind for some reason. I'm not sure what it would, maybe it's something else special. I thought it had something to do with the county, that's. That would probably be a Mark Foley question, because he's good at, or a candy question, but yeah, no, the, Karen showed me that you guys have 35, which would be your incorporated date, but your founded date is actually 25, so. I don't know where the 34, hmm comes in at that one wasn't a number mark threw at me so thank you very much I'm excited about that that's exciting um, anyone else have anything for new business I'll just say this because I was I've never been to the dog park before mm. I've been by it I've been close to it, but I've never had any reason to go to the dog park. I've walked around a little trail and everything. And there were people at eight o'clock in the morning on that little trail. Mm -hmm. And I was the lone dog watcher (laughs) in the dog park. And it was just neat to be able to take, it was our, we were dog 
sitting. <laughs> and it was just neat to be able to take our dog there because we don't have a fenced in backyard and uh, just neat to I let him run for two hours and he was exhausted at the end of the day but it was just a neat place to to go and take him and I just thought I'd share that. It's been so. very well used. Yeah, it has. It has. Um, one of the things that I gave to each of you um, I, I was hoping that at our next council meeting we could address some goals um, when Brad Kahn got voted onto council, um, Brent was our president and we came up with a bunch of questions for our potential council candidates. And I found a lot of the answers that we had gotten from some of those candidates because I wrote down some of the good ideas. And it made me think that maybe we should make some goals for 2024. So I kind of wrote a couple of questions down. What problems do you see or have heard about in Millersburg that need addressed? Have you thought of any possible solutions for these problems? What positive things do you see happening in Millersburg right now? And what are your goals as a council member for 2024? I know a lot of businesses come to their employees and say, okay, it's a new year. What are your goals? What do you hope to accomplish? And um, I kind of thought that maybe we would try something new and implement that here. So think about some of those things and we will discuss them at our next council meeting. Some possible goals, um, some things that you would like to see addressed in the coming year so that we can make a list and hopefully at the end of the year check everything off and say we, we did a good job. Okay, anyone have anything else? Do we have any wish visitor, any visitors, any visitors wish to address council? Dave? Thank you. Um, I'm standing Commissioner Dave Paul. I think I know everyone in this room. Um, I'd like to thank you um, for the invite, Mara Hoffi. Um, Mara Hoffi attended our meeting last week, so we, we kind of in agreement of we'll just invite each other. Yeah. Uh, so, Mara Hoffi, Council, uh, Millersburg team, and guests, it's an honor to be in front of each, each one of you. Just wanted to kind of reach out as county commissioner, now I'm chairman this year, just got appointed chair this morning, and just wanted to kind of reach out some things that we're doing at the county level that potentially could partner with you, each one of you, and, and just uh, as we move forward, I just announced this morning with the, the health district director, Michael Durr, we were able to receive a large grant for us called an uh, aging grant that allows seniors to stay at home, a program like that. So the health department through the county commissioners will be running that program that uh, will help uh, keep seniors in their houses for a longer period of time. It could be uh, just a program dealing with balance or education and you know, for falls to also maybe uh, to doing some handrails at their homes. So you'll be hearing a lot more as we roll that out we received a $191,000 grant that the commissioners and health department partnered with. And so we want to get the word out. So any contact will go to Michael Durr at the Holmes County Health, health District. He's the director. And we would like you to, everyone, residents, anyone to you know of a senior and need, maybe they're in the cusp, but maybe have to go to the nursing home. Maybe we can do something to keep them in their home and, and go from there. So that's just one program. That we're rolling out. Bob and I and my friend Bob and my opioid Ohio board member, we're working. Uh, there's a there's a lot of nuts and gears and grinding of opioid Ohio. It's that's a settlement dollars on the opioid issues with dealt with some of the uh, pharmaceuticals that uh, that get penalized and settled out of court. Bob and I sit on board. We meet all over Ohio lately, Eastern Ohio. And uh, we're working on looking at grants and opportunities on prevention. Oh, and uh, you'll see more of our district. We're district uh, loving down there. And we are trying to figure out there's 10 counties how to go after these dollars. I've been reaching out to uh, Holmes and Wayne Mental Health and Recovery Board and other stakeholders. And Bob's been a great representative on the board down there. And I owe him one for nominating. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, I'll give you back. <laughs> but 
But that, that is a serious situation. We, we look at that. We're looking at in the county starting uh, putting uh, Narcan training in our buildings for staff, where the health department will partner with you. And if you're looking at training in our building, we're doing in our building. And I know that the health department will be open to any kind of training. And then we'll probably have our on site uh, uh, back, I mean, nasal spray on, on, on that, but it'll be a trained staff to be able to be on site. We're seeing and hearing from State of Ohio the letters that we receive in the mail. You never know what could be, and you have to instantly be, have someone to know what to do to administer that nasal spray. So we're doing that, so there would be something you might want to piggyback at the village level. Uh, also, uh, we're dealing with the State of Ohio Governor DeWine in the budget. There's a, we're funding to address uh, our website and uh, hackers that are out there and wanting to get into our system. We in the county have been working with the University of Cincinnati team. They're looking at doing some training. It's free. And they, they have, I asked them if anyone in the, uh, the government sector of all over county could be part of the training. They said yes. We'll get more information if you're interested because it allows you to have an understanding of what they're trying to do. A lot of these, uh, they're overseas entities who do not like us. And they're trying to, they try to steal your information and hold it hostage. So we are going to be doing a lot more training on our staff. And if you're, like I say, if you're interested, let us know. Uh, it, Nate worked really hard on the Appalachia grants. I have been working with Columbus. We got them out of the uh, regional area of Omega. Now they're in Columbus at the Department of Development. The four grants are now uh, in the process of being vetted. I'm hoping we should hear something by the end of January, 1st of February. So hopefully we'll get those rolled out to everyone and then we can have good news on that. Because of that, we knew that there was a lot of grants that didn't get funded. So Chris Young and myself, the Board of Commissioners, have decided to, on April 6th, on a Saturday morning at the County Fairgrounds, we're going to hold a infrastructure grant program. What it is is going to be major funders of grants for uh, dealing with uh, uh, apartments who are, uh, maybe have challenges uh, of government entities. And we are going to be able to, we're bringing in all the big guns to, to, from Omega to Muskingum Watershed District, possibility of USDA World Development, and some of Chris's programs that he's looking at. So what we'll do, we'll talk about the grants, then you'll break out to tables that will have these entities there that you think, well, that fits us. Let's talk about this grant. And then and all the program, all the groups that I talked to are excited. They have never seen anything like this. So we're developing that so that if you have ideas and you can, can't figure out where to find them, these will be the entities. Omega has been working with me on all the grants in the state and federal level. So they'll be coming up and in this hosted committee and they'll be able to present what they're finding out. It'll be basically a, kind of like a telephone book or where to go to find funding and who to partner with. Awesome. So that'll be on, on April 6th. Uh, also, just to kind of give you an update on the, our new health building, we're on time and under budget right now. Things are going good. We want to thank you for partnering with us on the sidewalk. It means a lot. We, we're excited. We should be in June having a grand opening if everything goes well, but everything is going very well. Uh, uh, that is, uh, that building right there is also going to hold our emergency management program. Emergency management, because we, we saw during the derecho and all the storms, we needed a place where we house some people. Yeah. So we're going to have emergency management there and we're going to be able to have uh, supplies and things like that to get us through difficult times. And it just won't be for just, it'll be, could be storms that are, we figure the, the power is going to be out a little longer than possible. Jason Troyer, our EMA director, does a wonderful job. We've staffed up to make sure that we can do these kind of things. And, you know, the 
cooling shelters or situations where the power may be off, or it could be warming shelters if it's in the winter like we had last winter when we were out of power for three or four days. So those are things we're blending together because uh, Health District and EMA actually do a lot together. So you'll be hearing a lot more on that program and, and having the opportunity to use that. Uh, just a few things, I don't want to go too long. Uh, our bed tax program. I know that uh, you guys have your bed tax, and I actually started our bed tax program a long time ago, in 99. And uh, what we're doing, we, we usually start accepting applications in April and then roll them out in end of May or June. A lot of times we hear, well, I wish I'd do that you guys were doing this and the village is doing that or something like that. Just wanted to let you know what we're doing because I think there's a potential of the village partnering with some stuff downtown. So uh, I, will, uh, I will come to some of your meetings and discuss that. That would be great. I want to cut it short. I'm talking too long. And is there any questions for me? I have one. I knew you were going to ask one. Bob. <laughs> You know, I always put the blame on the commissioners for housing in Holmes County, which I find out I'm wrong. To, you know, to get a land bank, you guys want a land bank too, from my understanding. But it's who's holding the purse strings. Yeah. How do we work together to change that philosophy that we can get a land bank? Bob, well, thank you. Thank you for the question. I've actually been working on that. And more of educational on, on understanding of what opportunities you can have. When I worked for President Trump in, at, at the federal level, I taught communities how to uh, set up land banks, uh, Washington County and some of the other counties. It's just a matter of educating and understanding the positives are of land banks because they can be a very helpful tool for partnering with uh, small villages or the county level. I think it's just going to take a little time, but I, I'm, I'm doing my due diligence to uh, say here, this is an opportunity for all of us. Because of housing, we're, we're able to do certain things. It, it, it just would be nice with the land bank. We could have, uh, some of these buildings we're knocking down, that could have been purchased, and then they could have used it to develop in, into some mm -hmm. other uh, opportunity for, for communities. In some of the communities I worked with uh, under President Trump, we uh, used some of the uh, sites for uh, gardens, for people to have community gardens. For other sites, it was more of uh, putting up a new building, they were able to get grant funding for a, a new recreation hall or things like that. That loot dollars come from clean Ohio brownfield dollars. So it's just going to take some time, Bob, but we're getting there. I mean, housing, we need housing so bad, especially. Kilbuck and Millersburg. We have for starter homes. We've had heavy discussion. We had it this morning about housing, adult, I mean child daycare, and transportation. Those are the three things we're dealing with. Anything else? So I have a question. So <coughs> the um, very interested in the prevention, the money level for prevention, yeah. and it's not just opioid. I mean, we're talking methamphetamine, yeah. fentanyl. We're not, we're not um, immune to that here in the county. So I know that the levy that was part of our property taxes mm -hmm. for the Wayne Homes, yeah. so that's some of our tax dollars go there. So exactly what money would be available? I mean, Holmes County does not have as many places for preventative means, I'm assuming, not after they've overdosed. Yeah. We're talking about narco. Yeah. We're doing after they. I mean, I'm in a world where I see. <laughs> so preventative is the people able to get the counseling people, and it's limited here in Holmes County, and, and that's been frustrating with our tax dollars that thank, I feel. Thank you, uh, okay. Councilwoman uh, Kellogg. What we've done there is, when I came on board as commissioner, I decided to attend those uh, Holmes Wayne Mental Health buildings. Found out that we weren't getting our fair share of. Uh, Holmes County dollars, our levy dollars are sent to uh, Wayne County and they weren't returning as much as we had. So I started attending those meetings and now they have an interim director who's working with us, who uh, understands and we're going to call those dollars back into Holmes County. And so you're going to see a more, a greater amount of programs being developed, but 
also understanding is that they they got to get their things straightened up in, in the mental health and recovery board. They've been very good to be working. The last six months have been wonderful. It's just now we have to show our needs. Uh, Judge Lee is looking at using maybe potential some of those fundings for Project Stay, up through bringing Project Stay back that we had where we had kids who were uh, having challenges in school that we were able to have an education class off site. The, uh, the prevention and treatment will go hand in hand with the opioid grant that we're looking at. That could be prevention or treatment. So, answer your question, they're working with this hand in hand now. Okay, because you called me one day and we discussed it, okay. and I, I attended, I started attending those meetings because we hadn't had anyone representing us. So uh, even Dan Jackson started our job family service. He's attending with me now, but they've been very good to work with. They are they are asking us to build us some programs, what we need to fund, and we're going to go from there. Okay, good. Thank you. I have, I have a question. Yes. The the emergency management shelter area. Yes. Would you guys take donations? For that, when that's ready, or is that something that just needs to be? That right now, what good question, Mayor. And what we're looking at early on is at least setting up a, a what we can. We'll have we'll have a supply area of, of the basement that's going to be our storage area. We have to just get mindful what we need. Right. But we're also working with all the county, a lot of the county churches too. Okay. And, and so we're we're trying to figure if you can't get to Millardburg, we have it a mini, mini station in one of the churches throughout oh. Holmes County. So it might be where we have a supply closet where we can then give it out to everyone. During the uh, ice storm, I'm dating myself in 2004, we worked hand in hand with the, the Red Cross where we had blankets and needs and things like that. That's something we'll be addressing as we get closer to opening up the potential. But we'll have in that, that conference shelter area, There'll be a kitchenette oh, and things nice. like that that we uh, be able to use with with our staff. That's great. So it'll, it, it'll be something that's needed. Yeah. And that we're even looking at how to get people there because a lot of people can't make it there. I found that during the ice storm, taking some people to different sites. So we'll 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 be addressing that. But I think with Jason really Jason Troy, our EMA director, and his his staffer now. Uh, we are Jordan, and they are really on top of education, training, and seeing what our needs are right now. That's wonderful. Any other questions? Sorry for delaying your. No, meeting. you. Thank you so much. And, and if you ever need me here, I, I, I'd be love. love. I, I just again thank you for the partnership in the past. And I'm looking forward to the opportunities in the future. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks, much. Dave. Thank you. All right, does anyone else have anything? No? Anything for executive session? No? Do we have a motion for adjournment? Second. Excuse me, Poland. Hi. Our setter? Aye. Kellogg? Yes. Shoemaker? Aye. Vaughn? Aye. And Khan? Aye.